Sophie Germain Theorem, presented by Aditi LeMay. First off, let's give a shout out to possibly the biggest, baddest early female mathematician. Sophie Germain was born Marie Sophie Germain all the way back in April 1776 and used the pseudonym M. LeBlanc for much of her studies. She also used it to correspond with Gauss and Legendre about her work in number theory. Her major contribution to number theory was to outline a proof for Fermat's last theorem in one of her correspondences with Legendre, who later used her method to prove one case. Aptly, it is called the Sophie Germain theorem. Let's explore it. In the 1630s, Fermat proposed something called his last theorem. He was on his deathbed <laughs> and croaked out, for x to the n plus y to the n equals e to the n. Okay, yeah, not exactly. His last theorem is so named because it has been notoriously difficult to prove. In fact, it wasn't proven until Andrew Wiles in 1995. It goes something like this. x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n has no positive integer solutions for all n greater than 2. Simple looking, right? Well, not exactly. At the time Germain began work, only cases n equals 3 and n equals 4 had been proven. Our girl Sophie knew that proving each individual n didn't help because there are infinite numbers. So she began to think of a better way. She split Fermat's last theorem into two fundamental cases, and if both were proven, the theorem could be proven. Case 1, x to the p plus y to the p equals z to the p, has no integer solutions for which none of x, y, and z are divisible by p. In case 2, x to the p plus y to the p equals z to the p, has no integer solutions for which one and only one of x, y, and z are divisible by p. So these two cases could prove Fermat's last theorem. Germain focused her efforts on case 1. Her theorem is most commonly stated as follows. If p is an odd prime and q equals 2p plus 1 is also prime, then p must divide 1 of x, y, or z, and therefore case 1 of Fermat's last theorem is true for p. Remember that there are infinite prime numbers, so she was able to prove a part of a case of Fermat's last theorem for infinite numbers. Wow, so to wrap our heads around what this means, let's take p equals 3. In this case, q equals 2p plus 1, which equals 7, which is also a prime. Hence, according to Sophie Germain, if none of x, y, or z are divisible by 3, there is no positive integer solution to x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. The proof of this took her many days, and though ultimately a very different method was used to prove Fermat's last theorem, her idea to split the theorem into two cases and her approach revolutionized how mathematicians thought about this problem. Perhaps if she had had access to math materials at the time, as well as the luxury of peer review, she would have made even more incredible discoveries. Gauss, once discovering her true identity as a woman, wrote to her that she must have the noblest courage, quite extraordinary talents, and superior genius. Indeed, from Sophie Germain's theorem, we can see that this is all certainly true. She is an inspiration to us all.